Hey, what's up? This is Nothing Nowhere. I'm just going to take you guys through a track by track of my new album, Trauma Factory. You know, a lot of it was made here on my property. Some of it was made over on the West Coast in LA. But yeah, I think all in all, it took like two years to complete. And I uh, just want to say thank you to everybody who's taking the time to check it out, you know, give it a chance. But yeah, let's get into it. The first track on the record is the title track. It's called Trauma Factory and it's spoken by the White Wolf, someone who Nothing Nowhere fans have grown to know closer and closer over the years. Essentially it was a poem that I wrote when I was laying in bed and um, I think it's no surprise that I'm a pretty nostalgic person for whatever reason. Uh, I just always hearken back to the days of my youth and it was a pretty quintessential time for me and I just remember there being a lot of positive memories so uh, I was feeling really nostalgic one night in a bad way, you know, missing the past and missing the simplicity of being a kid. So, you know, I did what I usually do is just turn to music and I wrote that poem and uh, as soon as I heard the White Wolf recite it, it was uh, really surreal and really cool to hear it in that way. So I, I figured it was a good way to start the album off for sure. So after Trauma Factory comes Lights. Lights is one of my all-time favorites. I remember the day in the studio, Zach Cervini, JV, Fox Beach. Got to the studio and we were messing with some ideas and wasn't really feeling it. You know, it was kind of one of those days where nothing was panning out really well and I was getting a little frustrated. And so, you know, I think you know, Zach and JB were like, you know, let's just let's go get some food and kind of think about it later. We went, drove, got some food, and on the way there, we kept seeing the number four, and, and we kept seeing the number four, 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 four. And it, like, you know, from like Uber drivers, it's like random like numbers to numbers on apartments and buildings on the way there. And I was like, that's really weird. That's interesting. And then we looked up sort of like angel numbers and, and what that signifies and then just kind of talking about like 4444 four, four, four talks about, you know, working towards your goals or, you know, being in the moment and moving forward at the same time. So I remember I just had this crazy idea in my head and it just came into my head this kind of like do 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 I had that in my head and I just was like, we gotta get it back and I so I took a little voice memo and all that and we sped back, safely of course. Um, we got to the studio and I was like, yo, Zach, can you just pull up some sounds, blah, blah, blah. And I kept trying to do, 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 laid that in and then the bass. And I was like, this sounds crazy. You know, then I alley-ooped it to, to JV who, you know, put some crazy drums on there. The, the lyric came out, uh, you know, paint my world a new gray, paint comes in different shades. And the rest of the song, you know, wrote itself. Another thing I forgot to mention is we all licked the salt lamp in the studio, which was hilarious. We just thought that it would give us special powers and um, we got Zach Cervini to lick the salt lamp as well. His own salt lamp, he's never licked it. And I think that is the power behind lights and why it's so good. So, yeah. After Lights comes Buck, and Buck is a demo that I was sitting on for a while. I wanted to do something kind of like synth wave um, meets, you know, some heavy 808s in the chorus. And I tried to do that, you know, in demos before, but never had been particularly successful in my, in my eyes doing that. I remember making this one kind of at my apartment at the time. This was a while ago. And uh, yeah, once I made that chorus, you know, I gotta keep it a buck, keep it a buck. Like, just about keeping it real, you know what I mean? Like, it's a conversation. You know, the first and second verses are kind of just told from the perspective of someone from my hometown, you know? I, I had a, a, a lot of conversations with maybe people I grew up with or, you know, hearing things through the grapevine of saying, you know, like, wow, you know, 
Joe, nothing nowhere, is doing so well. Like, you know, what's it like? What's it like? It's just about saying, hey, you know, the grass isn't always greener. And it's sometimes dangerous to put all your eggs in one basket, thinking that, you know, reaching mm, some type of status or level of success in your head um, will bring you, you know, infinite happiness which that's just not the case. So, you know, I got to keep it a buck. I got to keep it a hundred. It's not all it's cracked up to be, you know what I mean? So the only way to truly be happy for me, you know, people have different opinions is like, uh, enjoy the present moment more than anything, more than, you know, looking forward into the future and stuff like that. So shout out to JB for making my terrible demo drums, you know, that much better. And, and Zach for bringing that crazy full band, like huge vibe to it. Um, I mean, I, you want to talk about tracks to play live? I can't wait to to play Buck Live for sure. After Buck comes uh, Lover Chemistry. Lover Chemistry is kind of funny how it happened. I was in the studio in LA with, uh, you know, Zach Cervini and uh, Chris Griotti, JV, and um, we were always putting Planet Earth on the TV in the studio, and we would just watch Planet Earth without the, the sound, and I remember watching it being like, seeing these weird mating rituals and all of this, uh, just weird mammal, animal stuff, and I was like, that's really interesting. I was kind of like, do you think like, like love exists in the animal kingdom, or like, is it just chemicals? Is it all just chemical? And I was like, does it exist in humans? Like, is it love, or is it just chemistry? Like, what is it? What is the, uh, what is that feeling? Is it just oxytocin? Is it chemicals? And I was like, wait a second, that's a, that's a good idea for a song. So yeah, we, we just came up with that riff and that riff is just like really full time and it's kind of like just that kind of this all like new wave like full time thing so much fun i can't i can't wait to uh play that live either you know whenever that happens i can't wait and uh i'm just really really hyped on that song for sure Another track we have on the album is Exile. Uh, Exile was so much fun to make. Uh, I had JV and Fox Beach here at my place and we turned my treehouse into a studio. And yeah, we would just make kind of like food on the campfire right outside the treehouse. And um, Joey showed me that really cool like loop he was working on and then we kind of fleshed that out and we ended up sampling an owl, a barred owl in the beginning of the, the track because there's so many owls here and it's, I think in terms of like how many, how many plays it's had for me is like Exile for me is the song that I've played the most. It's like, you know, the music I've always wanted to make but I've kind of been like standoffish about it and you know it i got to like really just get on that kind of like ignorant one word chorus and i couldn't be happier with it like the 808s go crazy uh it's just got that pocket like that's why i listen to like you know cardi and, and future and lil keed and and all that stuff that i love so much fun to make and uh I keep saying it for every single one. I can't play. I can't. I can't wait to play that one live for sure. So, exile. Get into it. Upside down. That is a track right there. Um, funny enough. Uh, I'd say the week before, a few days before recording Upside Down at Y2K's house, um, I was on an electric like bird scooter 
and I ran into a tree and smacked my head really hard. And it's hilarious now looking back. Um, Cause I was going off roading with the bird scooter, which I, you know, I probably wouldn't recommend. And then two days after I was at a skate park in San Diego and uh, cracked my head. I had a helmet on thankfully, but cracked my head off a ramp. And so when I pulled up to Y2K studio with JB, uh, we started doing some stuff and I just wasn't feeling good at all. Uh, I had a headache, I had my neck, I had whiplash and everything. So I was like, yo guys, I'm gonna go to the hospital. I gotta get an MRI. So I, I took an Uber to the hospital, you know, they had to wait in the waiting room for a long time and got an MRI. Uh, got back to the Airbnb later that night and, and JV showed me kind of the beginning of what Upside Down was gonna be. And, and I was like, this is amazing. And you can hear Y2K on the beginning of, of the track kind of with his doing his ooze and the guitar actually that JV laid down is really rad. You know, I wrote the chorus in that Airbnb kitchen and my sister was there and everything. And it was just a really cool moment to see it all be fleshed out. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm hyped that, that people are liking that song for sure. Pain Place is a track that I've been kind of sitting on for a while. Um, it was sort of shelved for some time because I wasn't really sure of where the direction had to go. I knew that thematically and lyrically it was where I wanted it to be, you know, like just talking about having so many emotions and not knowing where to put them or what to put them into. The track just it got to a certain point and I didn't know what the chorus was going to be. I didn't know what the, wh where to go with it. So, you know, when I'm not really sure that I turned to my friends. So I ended up sending it to Misogi and uh, he sent back some amazing uh, verse. And he also sent back, you know, his kind of interpretation of how the rest of the track should go with his production. And, you know, I was just so stoked on it. You know, anytime I get a chance to make music, with Misogi is, is uh, just amazing because he, I can't say enough good things about him and, and how talented he is and just how good of a person he is. So, you know, Pain Place, it's got this kind of electronic Misogi like vibe to it that, uh, you know, I love. And we have some more in the pipeline too. So, you know, hopefully the world can hear those as well. Fake Friend was a, another sort of fleshed out thing that happened in the treehouse where um, we finished it in the treehouse and we were on Zoom with Zach Servini. And uh, you know, it, it, to me it's just about, you know, having a toxic relationship with social media um, and personifying that into someone else, you know, I fake friend. Uh, I just this past year became really burnt out on all that stuff, it, and it being a necessary evil for, you know, doing what I do, being an artist, being a creator. But you know, I think I'd be having a, a much harder time without social media. So, yeah, I just had to write about it, and uh, I just wanted it to sound overall like a like a '90s vibe, and. Uh, just have it be sort of this anthemic like rock moment on the album. And I can't believe that it's being played on the radio across the US, like real like FM radio stations and being on like the Billboard alternative chart and stuff is something that uh, I'm really grateful for. It's teaching me that, you know, sky's the limit, just keep creating for sure. Death, something that uh, is very real, very raw, and I remember walking into the studio, going to Zach's, 
and just telling him like, yo, like, I, I see you got this like, this like eight string guitar right here. Uh, I want to put that thing to work. I want to make something heavy. I just remember I wanted, really wanted to make something heavy, and I remember I hopped on the keyboards and just had him pull up a, a dirty, the dirtiest 808 he could find. And you know, Zach has so many rad sounds, and just kept doing that 808 like dun 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 dun. dun, dun. And then uh, from there, like Zach just kept throwing ideas and throwing ideas, and like we just kept looking at each other, being like, "Yo, this is crazy." And it was really kind of like a testament to like being genreless and like not caring and having Trauma Factory be an experience. And uh, it's just a moment on the record that like goes so hard. And I hope we can open up a, a pit to it soon that shows. And, you know, I'm just stoked that like, you know, at this point in my career, you know, people who support me are so used to me just being like, well, you know, like, what am I going to try now? You know what I mean? I, I don't ever want to get stagnant. I don't ever want to do the same thing, like, twice, let alone ten times, you know what I mean, throughout my career. So being able to do something like death and, like, having people, like, you know, even people who don't listen to metal be like, yo, or hardcore be like, that's that's pretty rad. I think it's cool. Um, total creative freedom for sure. I encourage it. Pretend, uh, I think like sonically, is like super close to what I grew up listening to. You know, like it, it's me, like you can hear the young kid in Pretend that wanted to sound like Adam Lazara or like Buddy from Census Fail or something like that. And I just think it's cool to like have the rap verses over real drums in the verse and everything and just to be able to play some like octave chords and some like real like rad chords on guitar it's just i think it's a it's just me you know what i mean like no matter how much i try to like not be like sounding a certain way i think that the music i grew up with is so embedded in me and uh i think pretend is a good example of that for sure so you know shout out to uh to zach and uh you know making my full band idea like just completely realized and amazing. Blood is uh, another track on the album where uh, I, I wanted to try something a little different. It's kind of got that, uh, that new wave post-punk feel to it. It's actually the fastest song I've ever written. I remember I walked into Judge's studio and Judge, uh, I told him like, hey man, like, you know, I've been obsessed with, uh, you know, like Joy Division and and uh, stuff like that. And I want to do something kind of murky at nighttime, like gritty. And he played me uh, the instrumental, which he like pretty much had dialed in. And I was like, this is, uh, this is crazy. I remember I wrote, and I wrote the lyrics, I told the story about being like a metaphorical killer, killing a relationship, but in the song it sounds like you're killing a person, um, literally. So I wrote that in 20 minutes and, and we just kept looping that thing. Like, And then to have Kenny Hoopla hop on that, I mean, Kenny's a, an amazing person, uh, an amazing musician, and you know, he sent back his verse and I knew I wanted him on it and, and uh, he knocked it out of the park, you know, as we all knew he would. So, uh, and then shooting the music video too, like that was that was really rad to be able to uh, hang out with some cool animals and uh, you know spread the good word and um, pretend that like I was uh, you know a cool guy in the music video. You know that was really fun. Nightmare, I guess, would be the next track, and I've said this, you know, for a 
couple years now and especially rolling out to Trauma Factory being released that I've been you know very obsessed with Prince and Purple Rain the movie Nightmare was the first demo I made where you know I was every day I would record with uh, Purple Rain with a like just playing on my TV next to me with no sound and I just kind of watch it you see what comes to my mind and that bike he has in, the, in that movie is so rad and I remember just starting the beat and having the motorcycle sample at the beginning and just like you know there's one scene where he like leaves the club and he's on his bike and I was just like I live inside the nighttime and that's what I thought in my head and I just was right into it and I'm stoked with how it came out the, the demo was was so much more stripped back until you know Zach Servini touched it which you know he blew it out of the water, like putting like real drums in, and just making it massive, and you know, being able to, to film that music video with Johnny Malibu and everything was just one of the more fun days of my life for sure. And I remember Pete Wentz and uh, Spencer, who was in Panic at the Disco, they pulled out to the shoot because I work with them, and you know, they they uh, you know they work with DCD too, like that's their label and so funny when they pulled up to the shoot and I had the whole Johnny Malibu thing on and they we were just all tripping out and I'll always remember that for sure but I'm hyped on that song and that was the first single to be sort of like introduced no one knew at the time that there were going to be singles to this album so you know so far away when it actually was released and uh you know, I was hyped that, that, that people were, were into it and like just again cool with me being like, you know, a little kid in the candy store and just like or a little kid running around with scissors making whatever genre I want and you know, for the most part people have been super receptive and it's cool that it's cool that genre doesn't matter anymore. So Crave is a track that was also inspired by Purple Rain. You know, it was during that month, two month, three month period where I was obsessed with Purple Rain, watching the movie next to me with, without the sound and just with my guitar. You know, thinking of what I'm seeing and, you know, telling a story. Because oftentimes when you're when you're writing music, it's like it's good to like take inspiration from like whatever you can. And I was so obsessed with that movie that it was cool to just mess around. And uh, yeah, my friend Lucas kind of sent me the guitar, uh, the original guitar, and uh, took that beat and made it kind of like had these plug. I put these plug 808s into it and uh, just made something smooth, something like sad, but like. I don't know, kind of like R&B vibes for sure. I'm hyped how it came out. You know, I'm, I'm always like, a lot of people are used to like my music just, you know, whining and crying about relationships and, and Crave is certainly something different. So, you know, it's cool to like thematically like step outside my, my comfort zone and like just see how far I'm willing to go for sure. And, uh, you know, I think it really is a nice, a nice point on the record and it's just it's another thing I've always wanted to do but I always never did until Trauma Factory so I'm stoked for sure. Real is a track that I've had for a while you know the title says it all it's a it's a real track it's real real life for me I just you know wanted to tell a story and you know speak on where I'm at in my life and how I feel and dealing with the pressure I put on myself and um, not wanting to let people down for sure so you know real is me being honest about you know mental illness and uh, pressure, expectations, and uh, you know, it's something that I've 
the thing I've gotten pretty good at doing in music is like just spilling the beans for sure and like being honest. And you know, I, I know people who have been listening to me, you know, from for years now appreciate real because uh, I'm sure that reminds them of when they first started listening to me, kind of a formula that I made in my parents' basement. And I'm happy that that trauma factory could have some of that on there for sure. Uh, barely bleeding, um, I guess, was kind of a tribute to the people who inspired me to make music sonically. You know, it sounds like something that I would have listened to on the way to the skate park when I was in, you know, 6th, 7th, 8th grade. You know, I still listen to that type of music. It's just not the only type of music I listen to anymore. And I've always wanted to do something like that, and I've had the idea in my head of like a full acoustic chorus that just kind of breaks out, and then having the track build and build and build to this sort of anthemic ending. It's just a really great moment for me to be able to do that and to have an amazing uh, producer like Zach to, to bring the full band moment out at the end and, you know, having, you know, one of my best friends, JB, uh, you know, take my, my vision of, you know, three, four electronic drums and, you know, kill that as well. But, yeah, it's just, it was a bucket list thing for me, for sure. And, um... I just wanted something to, to tie the album together and, and you know put a bow on it and be like this is Trauma Factory, this is me, and that's it. Um, you know we, 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 we go out, we escape from the Trauma Factory, um, kind of on a, on, a, on a high note, and it goes out, the guitars ring out and that's it, you know what I mean, and who knows what the future will hold. I uh, just want to say thank you to everybody who's listened to the record, bought a vinyl, and, you know streamed, streamed the record and uh, Trauma Factory is something that I've really had in my mind for a long time and I, I really wanted to challenge myself um, and I really wanted to test the waters of what I could do within separate genres and separate sounds and separate themes and I appreciate you guys for you know always giving me a chance and supporting me so uh, Trauma Factory out now go stream if you want and uh, see you guys next time peace